Welcome, everyone, to this YouTube exclusive version of the PFF Fantasy Podcast. I'm John Macri, and today, to get you ready for the start of the 2024 fantasy football season, I'm diving into the current ADP provided by Sleeper and strategizing the ideal super flex draft outcome when picking from the one to three draft spots. So 101, 102, or 103. We're going to maintain a, a pretty similar strat throat from any of those draft holes. So we're doing this just for you, the YouTube crowd. So if you like this short form type of content, or if there's something else you'd like done in a similar way, shout out in the comments below and don't forget to like and subscribe while you're here as well. I'd very much appreciate that. All right. Super flex draft strategy. We're using full PPR scoring and sleeper um, super flex ADP. As of July 8th, we're going to hit on 13 to 14 rounds at a relatively quick pace, quick pace, but still enough to for you know thought process and, and strategy built in. So let's get into it right away here. Right at the top, 101 to 103, you're one of the first three drafters. You won't be drafting again for another 20-ish picks. You got your pick of the litter here. Quarterback is the most important position in Superflex, one of the smaller pools of players uh, to choose from here as well. So for me, this pick, whether it's 101, 102, or 103, has to be quarterback. Um, for the sake of keeping it simple, let, let's say we're at 101. And for me, that's Josh Allen of the Buffalo Bills. We talked about why he's my QB1 this year in our QB rankings episode. Um, and that is absolutely my 101 in Superflex drafts this season as well. But yeah, if Allen is off the board, you're 102. 103 Jalen Hurts Lamar Jackson Patrick Mahomes again you have elite options there so make sure to grab whichever one is your favorite and then sit patiently for you know 84 years and wait until you're you're up again in round two so once we are up again in round two it'll be at the end of round two 210 to 212 um finally you know picking again here it, it could be a long and stressful wait for sure but luckily ADP relatively kind to us here because we're going quarterback again. Um, even in PPR scoring, quarterbacks still make up more than half of the top 25 fantasy scores by the end of the season. Um, that's been the case throughout the past decade. If you're in half PPR or non PPR, then they only become more important and make up even larger percentage of the top scores and into the top 50 as well. So you do have to be aware of kind of the scoring advantages and disadvantages for the non-quarterback positions but even here using full ppr we're, we're locking up the quarterback position uh, originally when i wrote this article um, for pff.com kyler murray was available in this range but he, he's been moving up quite a bit as, as people get sharper so we're, we're still taking a pretty damn good consolation prize here because our QB2 is going to be Jordan Love of the Green Bay Packers last season's QB5, and that locks down our starting quarterback spots in, in our starting lineup, right? So right out the gate. Um, then we get back-to-back -back picks here for round three, and now that we have quarterbacks locked up, we can turn our attention to the rest of the lineup, and there's some really nice options here with legit top five upside for their positions, including Sam Laporta and Travis Kelsey, but... For me, my personal favorite is going to be Jonathan Taylor running back for the Indianapolis Colts. Arguably a tier one running back this year. He's right on the fringe for me. Workhorse potential, obviously. And then, of course, a, an elite um, fantasy production history, right? So we're going to ride with him here as our RB1, our first non-quarterback off the board. Then... We wait another 84 years to pick again here in at the end of round four. I, the, the pain of watching players you'd like come off the board, board is going to be real, but remain patient because options are, are still a plenty here in the fourth round and, and, and beyond. And when it's finally time to pick again, I think we're just judging by how ADP is looking this year. We're very well going running back, running back here after starting the draft quarterback, quarterback, just because again of how the ADP falls. And, and I don't hate it. As we know, the running back position has the best odds of, you know, of helping fill out those top five, top three, sometimes, um, you know, and top 10 scores for the year, even in PPR over wide receivers, right? So we'll take our swings here on the running backs early and then let the fantasy gods help us at a deeper position uh, in wide receiver later on. So very happy to grab Rashad White here in the fourth round as our RB2. He was RB5 in PPR leagues last season, thanks to elite opportunities per game, 
um, carries plus targets through 17 weeks. So we'll hope for a similar workload here in 2024. You also got Isaiah Pacheco, DJ Moore um, also kind of live around here. So they're both strong options to consider as well if White's gone or if you don't necessarily like um, Rashad White. Okay, round five. This is maybe going to surprise people because right after White, um, we got two quarterbacks already. We got two running backs, but it's super flex. And ADP has a very valuable piece on the board here in Jaden Daniels of the Washington Commanders. And honestly, I, I don't want any of my league mates to have that upside if they weren't willing to reach for him earlier. Um, if ADP stays true here and he's on the board, Two QBs rostered already or not, I'm absolutely taking Jaden Daniels here. Um, one, so my league mates can't have him. But two, because he's really the only quarterback left outside the top 10 that has actual top five upside. And 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 some and should something happen to um, Josh Allen or, or Jordan Love, who we just spent valuable picks on, um, if they were to miss time, we can pop Jaden Daniels in the lineup and potentially not lose anything in that starting spot. So that's a win in my book. So worth it for that potential alone. And then, you know, you starve out your competition from the upside as well. So you can, you know, be the envy of all your friends here with these three quarterbacks. And, you know, if you don't like the three quarterback strategy through five rounds, I, I get it. Uh, it's understandable. I personally like the elite depth there. But you don't have to. I mean, Isaiah Pacheco, uh, Jalen Waddle, Nico Collins, all typically available here as well. But um, I, I'm fine going that route. Personally, I like the opportunity for Jaden Daniels. He's depending on where you're drafting. He could go earlier and how people are treating the quarterback position. But if he's falling into that fifth round, I'm taking him before somebody else does. Um, all right. Round six, it's been a long wait here now, I guess, for wide receiver um, through five rounds. But we're going to go in round six. We're going to take T. Higgins um, to, to rescue us as our wide receiver one. This was another spot where when I wrote about this article, we, we had a different ADP. And, and George Pickens was a favorite here for me. But he's actually since been rising quite a bit as well and, and might not be available. So... If you're telling me T. Higgins available here as a consolation prize, then you know we're teed up for another W here. You can go back and listen to our Bounce Back Candidates episode to find out why I love him so much this year after a down 2023. Um, and then for those who were panicking potentially about not having a wide receiver uh, here yet, uh, fear not because we got T. Higgins. Now we're doubling up at the position in round seven at wide receiver again. You know, kind of one of the benefits of the depth of this position is we have wide receiver one upside still in range in round seven of super flex drafts and Keenan Allen of the Chicago Bears is coming off a wide receiver one season in 2023 finishing as the PPR wide receiver eight I know he's going to a new team rookie quarterback DJ Moore is there as is Romo Dunze but this is something we covered in a past episode as well I believe it was our wide receiver rankings episode I'm a firm believer that Keenan Allen has just a, as good a shot as anyone on the bears to lead that receiving core in 2024. Um, but again, the, the discrepancy in ADP is giving quite a bit of an edge to DJ Moore going over two rounds ahead of him. So we'll take that at cost all day. Um, and typically, you know, if T Higgins and, and Keenan Allen are maybe both gone, then that's where I'll, I'll maybe use one of these picks for a swing at tight end, either Evan Ingram or George Kittle. But Usually with this range here, I want another high-end wide receiver for my lineup more than anything, just for the safer production floor, if nothing else. So um, T. Higgins and uh, Keenan Allen are going to be our first two wide receivers off the board. All right, we've got a couple wide receivers, a couple running backs. We've got three quarterbacks. So this is where I'm just going to start grabbing value as it falls whether it's wide receiver running back sometimes tight end um, we're in round eight here the end of round eight not a lot of other options in this range so we'll take a shot um, for tight end a little bit later because it is one of the spots where it's a little bit of a dead zone um, but for me one of my favorite picks in this range is Zamir White uh, to come in as our RB3 
nothing fancy about him other than a, a potentially huge workload for the Las Vegas Raiders this season. We, we saw him take that on last year over the last four games of the year. He finished as the PPR RB9 um, over those four games, despite just middle of the pack rushing metrics, right? Like if he gets even close to that workload again, then we're talking about an absolute steal here as the 24th, 26th running back off the board. So really like Zamir White in this range. And then close to back to back picks here, depending on which of these one to three draft spots you're, you're picking from going into round nine. I like Jordan Addison here. Uh, again, we're taking kind of the value as it falls at these other positions. Now that our quarterback spot is filled out, Addison hangs around here quite a bit. Um, I think the fear of, of a rookie quarterback and, and Justin Jefferson for a full season can scare some people off. But as our wide receiver three, we're getting a first round talent from a year ago, finished as the PPR wide receiver 25 as a rookie um, with a couple of weekly wide receiver one overall finishes in there as well. Potentially no TJ Hawkinson for a bit um, this season in Minnesota with his ACL tear. JJ McCarthy is, is likely going to be the starting quarterback. He could definitely be better than people give him credit for rookie quarterbacks surprise us all the time um if addison takes another step now in year two i'm very happy with that potential as my wide receiver three to plug into my lineup as needed um the other player i, I consider here is rookie lad mcconkey who who could very well lead the chargers and targets this year but comes with a bit more risk as an unknown i like mcconkey quite a bit so i'll occasionally switch that up a bit and, and go mcconkey there because I, I do like him and believe in him quite a bit okay round 10 uh, look, tight end, it's going to be our weaker point on the roster, but it comes at the cost of, you know, being set everywhere else, right? So, you know, this is where we're going to grab a tight end in round 10. And honestly, grabbing Dalton Schultz here uh, of the Houston Texans as our tight end one this late, I don't hate that at all. We know that Houston offense is going to have firepower and there are going to be mouths to feed. But for me, Schultz's value comes in the red zone and, and with touchdown potential as he will probably leapfrog some of that target competition once the team gets into scoring range closer to the goal line right so we saw that last year he ranked second among all tight ends in targets in the end zone he ranked eighth in red zone targets delivered a ppr tight end 10 finish like we can likely leave him in our starting lineups there for safety purposes even and he won't kill us with just a few targets per game but then still having that touchdown potential puts him in play as a top eight ish option every single week so um I, I like Dal Dalton Schultz as our tight end one with this type of build. Otherwise, Cole Komet, Pat Fryermuth, I'm treating fairly similarly and, and find safe options in this range as well. All right, round 11 with the safe tight end pick in there now, we can start maybe taking some bigger swings at uh, other positions when they're available. And, and to me, the best one in this range is probably Christian Watson wide receiver for the Green Bay Packers. Um, Tajay Spears and Brian Thomas Jr. are really close as well. But if Watson can get healthy, stay healthy, we can now pair him with Jordan Love, um, our quarterback from round two. And we have a potential top 24 wide receiver stacked with our starting quarterback. And it costs us nothing. So to me, that's worth the swing here in round 11. Um, going into round 12, this is 20-ish picks post Christian Watson later now. We get to round 12, and the lottery tickets start to thin out, but both Curtis Samuel and Khalil Shakir are going in this range, and after spending 101 on Josh Allen, we could potentially stack here again um, for our other quarterback. And to me, Khalil Shakir is a lot of fun, especially if he works out. Um, you know, when, when he emerged in the back half of last season, he, he led the Bills receivers, Stefan Diggs included, in, in receiving yards, yards per route run, and he tied for the team lead in touchdowns from week seven on. So, Yes, there's more slot competition there in Buffalo this year, but if he can win that job and, and play there consistently throughout the season, which I think he can, there's a lot of PPR upside to hit on there, uh, and especially in round 12 with an elite quarterback in Josh Allen already as well. So that would be the player that I'd be looking at here or Curtis Samuel um, in that round 12. And then round 13, this will be maybe our last pick here for, for the purposes of this, um, this episode. Jerome Ford uh, is the pick here for me, a player I keep kind of coming back to in this range. 
um, Jerome Ford of the Cleveland Browns. We we just don't know what Nick Chubb is going to look like coming off injury or how the Browns are going to utilize him in his return too, right? So Ford, to me, I think makes a lot of sense in this range to bet on for potential volume, um, all things considered. And again, there's no real cost here. So a free square where if it hits, great. But if not, you know, we move on with little damage done, right? So that's through the first 13 rounds. Once you get into round 14, um, it, it's just about filling out your remaining depth on the roster, right? Or or adding your defense special teams or kickers if you're nasty. But really, once we get outside, you know, that top 150, arguably even a bit before that, I mean, ADP be damned, right? Like grab whoever you're betting on as a sleeper and don't be afraid to you know reach because at this point there, there's no such thing as a reach really go get your guy before your league mates do and and don't worry about the adp at all in this in this range outside of that top 150 because again it, there's plenty of sleepers these guys all have very similar um chances of hitting or, or missing right so that's what round 14 beyond and beyond it is really kind of all about for me but that's our team that's going to be a wrap for us i like our roster quite a bit based on this adp and approach obviously going quarterback early um, makes a big difference in solidifying that important position there with josh allen jordan love but then adding that potential upside with Jaden daniels in in round five i i really like that idea um it it stands out to me as one of my favorite moves potentially for this season specifically in this draft spot so um yeah that that that's kind of a, a the way that i'd be approaching these picks one to three um you know one to three is always a tougher spot to draft from it's always difficult to have such a large um crop of players go in between you and your picks and um that you know that aren't the back-to-back -back ones but I, I i think we made the most of it here so let me know what your strategy is for this pick range, which players you might prefer. If you'd like me to do this again with another pick range, four to six, seven to nine, 10 to 12, we will be happy to do so. Um, just once again, don't forget to like and subscribe. And you can find the full written versions of each of these draft strat articles for free on pff.com. We'll be um, back in the regular podcast feed as well tomorrow. Nate and I covering our 2024 tight end rankings. That'll be Wednesday. So be sure to check that out as well. Appreciate you all. And until next time, peace out.